Hi there everyone, it's Bren here and welcome back to this week's garden update. Well, yesterday I had a really productive day in the garden where I spent a few hours trying to get some of those jobs ticked off my absolutely massive list. You know what it's like this time of year, especially when you come out of summer, uh, there's just so much to do. But what I mostly concentrated on was just doing a general tidy up, bit of weeding and edging to make it look a bit better and make me feel a bit better too. Um, I also transplanted some of those little seedlings into bigger pots. Um, I got some bulbs in the ground for spring. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with how yesterday went. Um, so anyway, um, well, in this week's video, what I'll be doing is I'll be showing you um, um, we'll be having a look at some radishes, a nice bean that I'm kind of really mad about at the moment and we'll be having a look at um, a garden bed which I don't think I actually showed you before. It's a 15 meter long garden bed in the front garden that I've done from absolute scratch. It used to just all be grass and now it's starting to fill up nicely. It's about 18 months old and um, I think you'll enjoy that. So. Um, today it's actually the first day of school holidays and usually I record my videos in the afternoon or late morning after I drop the kids off at school. For this video I recorded it early morning so let's go and hop straight in and have a look. It's half six in the morning now and the sun is about to make an appearance. You can see it there through the trees. And usually when I record my videos it's after I've dropped the kids off at school in the morning but today it's school holidays so I'm recording this and um, no rush this morning we can take it easy and I can show you around my garden at a different time of day so there's a beautiful annual flower that's popped up amongst the grass here that I'm going to show you which is growing in this area they are it's borage so these have just self seeded they were growing up over in this section and the seeds have just gone everywhere um, and I have just left them to grow um, and that's why it looks so untidy here because it's it's just that um, I haven't got around to doing it but these flowers are beautiful I always see blue banded bees here which are the native Australian bees and um, these love these flowers um, I've never actually had them self-seeded this time of year, so I'm wondering, I wonder if they'll survive the frost. Um, it'll be one of my jobs I'll have to get around to doing. I need to, what I'll probably do is, you can see there's quite a few plants here, so I'll probably come in and when I get a chance, I'll probably take all the grass away and just leave these plants here and see what happens. But um, you can see everything does look a bit different this time of day, the lighting. It's lovely. So I'm over here in the raised veggie garden area. Beautiful sun rising. And I can smell the smoke in the air from everyone's um, fireplaces. There's a lot of older houses here that have the traditional fireplace. Um, and I love that smell. It reminds me of Ireland. When I was a little girl, everyone, that's how you'd heat a house up. But now we've got reverse cycle air conditioning. It's not really the same as sitting beside a beautiful warm fire in the middle of winter or autumn as we are now. But um, this is what I wanted to show you. Do you remember a few weeks ago I got this for free? It's an old post box or letter box. Um, and I've just popped it up here in the raised veggie garden. And the intention, well, what I'm going to use it for is to store my tools like my secateurs and my... Um, my trowels because I always seem to lose them in here and I thought if I have one place to put them I'll get into the habit of always putting them back in and then I'll know where they are so this is where for those of you who don't have seen letter box post box like this you put the letters in there and then you just lift up the back so that's where I'm going to store all the tools in there so put in a bit of an archway uh, <laughs> it doesn't look too good at the moment. I just started it last night. I did it quickly. I just used whatever I could find in the garden, like old branches. Um, because I put them in because I really need to get a frame up soon. All my peas are starting to grow here. And over here, I've got lots of radishes that are ready to harvest. 
Look at them in here, aren't they beautiful little gems? So oh, these ones in here are called Cherry Bell. I'll pull one out so we can have a look at them. How beautiful are they? I only saw them about four weeks ago. So radishes are a wonderful, quick growing crop. Um, and I put these ones in here um, just to fill in this area and use it up. And there's some along there too, while I'm waiting for the other plants to grow. So there you've got um, mustard green. I've got some corn flowers and I've got some more um, peas in here. So I thought I would just use the space up while I have it. And actually this year, whoops, <laughs> this year I'm going to grow a lot of different types of radishes. I'll show you some that I have that I'm planning to put in in the next few weeks. So here's a little selection here. I've got some ornamental radish, uh, purple plum, black Spanish long, and I've got the round ones as well. And these ones here, these look pretty cool. They are the um, watermelon radish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger the planting. So every two to three weeks, I'm going to put some more seeds in and hopefully that will keep me going over um, over the winter period. I'm also going to plant some in um, um, some um, planters as well as putting them in the raised beds. Look what I just spotted. Isn't that a beautiful looking nasturtium flower? I've never seen one like this before. I just got them um, from a mixed trailing pack. The nasturtiums are starting to fill out very nicely underneath the orange tree. You can see lots and lots of oranges here. And you see how they're starting to get that tint, like that one over there, the orange colour. Lots and lots of oranges. Won't be too long before I'll be harvesting these. And there's another train going by. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. Um, okay, so I'm going down here to the archway that has the scarlet runner beans. So I'm going to harvest some of these beans today. I've got quite a few now that have dried out. So these can be, these beans are so versatile because you can harvest the pods when they're young and just steam them or you can let them grow a bit larger, like this one here, and you can remove the beans from it and eat them that way, or you can just let them dry out and store them and have them over winter time. So it's lovely how you can have them at different stages. I've just opened up these two pods here. So this is the one that's got a bit larger, so it'd be too tough to eat this outside part of the bean pod. But you can take the beans out and eat them if you steam them. They're really delicious. And then this is when it dries out. You can see, I'll open it up there. The beans kind of shrivel up a bit. I actually have an example here. So that's the one there from the mature pod. And this is the one from the pod that's dried. Um, so you can actually store them over winter and you can still use them in cooking. But as I mentioned last week, I'm saving these ones here um, for seed swap. Because um, these seeds are, I mean, they're not that easy to find. When I got my original lot, um, a lot of the places had sold out of them. I mean, it may be easier now, but um, yeah, these are quite good to have, I think. So with these vines, they're very ornamental and fast growing. You can see they've reached over the top of the trestle. I'll be cutting that back these soon. Cutting these back soon to the ground and mulching them to protect the roots from frost. And come springtime, they will just pop right back up and flower very, very fast. There's a new dahlia over in the dahlia patch that I just wanted to show you. It was a bit of a late bloomer and it's a beautiful dahlia. A bit different to my lighter pastel shaded ones that you can see here. I'll go and show you now. Here it is here. Look at this stunning dahlia flower. This one's called Atelma Maud. Um, it's fluffing over a bit. There's another one there. I haven't staked this one up very well. You can see a few more. But this dahlia here is actually a dinner plate dahlia which reaches up to 30 centimeters round but as you can see if I put my hand there it's not quite that big 
I don't think I did <laughs> looked after it well enough to get big blooms out of it. So similar to um, similar to the um, scarlet runner beans, in a few weeks I'll be cutting back this dahlia patch. Um, I've spoken to a few people in the area where I live and they actually leave their dahlias in the ground, the tubers in the ground and I've just been advised to give it a really really heavy mulch so I think that's what I'll do with these and um, I'll just cut them back put loads of straw on top of it and hope for the best cross my fingers that they don't die and um, as I said before the frost that we get in the area are very very mild we did have a quite a um, heavy frost last year some of you might be laughing it was minus six that was probably nothing compared to other people oh it's just so pretty here with the sun rising I love this area this time of the morning I still have another butternut squash uh, vine growing there I'll leave that in a bit longer okay so I'm gonna head over to the front garden now I want to show you an area that I haven't shown you before that's about 18 months old. Yesterday I was very very busy collecting seeds and I put in a whole load of bulbs in here of the Dutch irises. I thought that would look nice there beside the trestle with the um, sweet peas growing on it. Um, and I covered it with cow manure. So hopefully now, come springtime, this will be full of beautiful blue flowers. To give my roseberry plants a bit of a prune. I'll wait until the flowers finish because the bees are really enjoying them. Um, I've got this one here. I think it's called a Rosa Rosemary. It's got kind of pink blooms. And then I've got the traditional one here which has the, um, the blue flowers on it. Okay, so we'll head over to the front garden now. I have a garden bed here that I have never shown you before. So my chrysanthemums opening up now. These are the salmony pink ones. I have in the other garden bed I'm going to show you are where I have lots of the um, yellow chrysanthemums. And up here you can see lots of the camellias are starting to open up. Lots and lots of flowers and usually when this tree flowers and it starts to lose the petals they all fall down here and it just makes for such a beautiful sight it's like confetti from a wedding delicate little flower it's an Australian native viola and um, I put one plant in this area probably about two years ago and it's starting to naturalize a bit which I'm really happy about there's a couple of bromeliads. This is called a matchstick bromeliad. Look at that. And that's not even its full colour yet. There's another one over here. Oh, this is it here. The garden bed I've never shown you before. It's 15 metres long. And it's only about 18 months old. It's full of um, flowers that I've done from cuttings. Um, division from other areas in my garden grown things from seed it's mostly got perennials in here but I have put some annuals there's some of that cosmos and um, I'm gonna focus on this garden bed this year a lot more to fill it out I was just waiting on the perennials to establish a bit so I've got some lovely um, cat mint there I've got lots of um, irises bearded irises and um, what else I've got um, evening primrose lots of perennials here so what I did with this bed was I just layered it with cardboard about two years ago and covered it with a thick layer of um, mulch um, that I got for free and then I just started to plant it out spring last year. It's very overgrown, look this is the grass I can't get rid of, it's doing my head in but um, I'll get on top of it. Um, it's not really the best looking site at the moment but I wanted to share it with you so you can see how how it comes along and hopefully this time next year I'll have it looking really really nice. So lots of the annuals that you've seen me potting up like the foxgloves, nigella, calendula I'm going to actually put in here for springtime. I want to have it looking really really full and lush, packed full of colour. 
this orange Mexican sunflower has a lot more flowers on it now. I really need to get on top of the deadheading. I haven't been doing a good job with that. But isn't that just so striking? This plant originates from Mexico and they can get really, really tall up to 1.8 meters. You can see these ones are quite high. So I need to be cutting off these here. That might be a job for today. So one of my goals in the next few years is to have a garden similar to Monty Don's Jewel Garden, which is full of vibrant flowering plants that resemble jewels in shades of blue and orange and golds and reds. And I can use some of my existing plants that I have, like some of my dahlias, some of my blue salvias, gladiolis, cannas, and I'll definitely be adding these into it as well, these Mexican sunflowers. Well, it's time for me to head inside now. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And just to let you know, next week's video may be up a little bit later than usual. Maybe, we'll see how we go. Just in case you're wondering on a Friday if I haven't posted it. But until then, I hope you all have a wonderful week and happy gardening.